Okay, so I've got my Cadillac DeVille back. It's a 2002, and I love the car. I got the stereo system installed by Agora Auto Sounds, and well, this is the final phase of installation for this vehicle, which has a DSP, digital sound processor, I believe it is, or something like that. Anyways, so what's gonna happen next is I've got actually the famous audiophile Andy Waymeyer from Audiofrog, who's gonna help me set up the installation of the tuning to the vehicle so the speakers sound pretty awesome. Let's see what he does for us, or at least for me. Wait, we're being recorded. That's okay. <laughs> and rolling. My job is to make people mad, make them laugh, and fun. <laughs> this is a really good job. Yeah. Andy Waymeyer making people mad and laugh at the same time. Thank you for coming out, Andy, and um, helping me tune my DeVille. Uh, is that what this thing is? This is an 05 Cadillac DeVille. I haven't seen a DeVille since I was going to install it. I think the last one Which they call a DHS. <laughs> and then we're here at, see that big sign right there? Agora Auto Sounds. Can't put signs out here. Oh, we can't put signs out here. I'll put one here in digitally, just right about there. And action, that looks awesome, right? And I'm gonna wipe gonna it off. The guys at, um, uh, what was that? Mobile Electronics Magazine, I think, wanted to. This is when I was in a little building which used to be a t shirt factory in Monrovia, right? And I rented that building because it was like a little house and it had a yard. My dogs used to come and hang oh, out. And there were fruit trees and all kinds of stuff, and it was at the end of a residential street. But, but they asked me for a picture of our headquarters, right? So I sent them a picture of the Patronus Towers in Kuala Lumpur, and I faked the Audio Frog logo <laughs> in one of the windows. That's the way to get a reaction out of people, huh? Yeah, it's like, come on, man. So this is the installer Jaime from Agora Auto Sounds. Can you briefly tell us what's in that vehicle? Um, so we have a double din Kenwood unit, uh, an A-channel VXI, uh, amplifier so it's a eight channel amplifier with a dsp built in it's got a audio frog 1.5 inch tweeters on the what are they gs one one gb15 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 gb15s and then uh, we have uh, audison voce six and a half uh, mid-range of the doors and the front doors and the rear speakers are oh, what the hell did we put oh audison prima so it's a coax in the rear and we have two 10 tw3s running off of a uh, realm amplifier that's it. And can you briefly tell us what you're going to be doing to this vehicle and why tuning is important for those that don't understand what's going on with today's audio technology avail availabilities? Yeah, I'm going to be making you happy. <laughs> That's my objective here. And um, um, in, order to, in order to make customers happy, um, these days with uh, with with car audio uh, hooking shit up is not enough um, and uh, especially for especially for customers who are experienced listeners who or who have some sort of performance benchmark which they have because they're either a home audio file or they work in music production or or something like that um, um, and finishing the job is is optimizing the system i don't so i have a buddy that i used to work with um who's an acoustician and a mathematician and whatever else and, and i was eating lunch with him one day and i mentioned something about tuning systems and he stopped me this, this german guy stopped me he says i don't tune systems and uh, i said okay and i said I, and i'm sitting here thinking okay i know it's coming he says i measure their performance i i measure their deficiencies and i optimize and i optimize their performance and i said yeah that's what i meant <laughs> right so tuning there's a part of tuning a system that's a matter of um uh a matter of of adding adding some performance aspects uh for a customer's preference right and i think a good analogy is 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 maybe a steakhouse like morton's right if you don't know anything about a steak and you go to morton's they don't just like serve you some crap right? They serve you a Morton steak because that's what they do. That's what they do. And they, if you, if you know what you like, 
then they'll give you some options, right? So what options do you get at Morton's? You can order cream corn or you know some other stuff, but in terms of a steak, you get to pick your cut, right? You get to pick your cut. You get to tell them whether you want them to burn it to a crisp or whether you want it to be cooked only enough that like a good vet could raise the cow, <laughs> right? And that's pretty much it. But you don't get the spice rack on the table, you get salt and pepper, right? So, so the chef's job at Morton's is to serve you a Morton steak with enough room for you to tailor it in a predictable and consistent way for your preference, right? But if you order a Morton steak, they're not gonna like put it out in the road in a hot, on a hot road and let the road cook it. They're gonna do the best job for you. And delivering a, delivering a high performance car audio system to a, to, a, to a customer means cooking the steak. Right? It doesn't mean buying the steak. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean putting the steak on a plate. It means preparing the steak. And there's correct, and then there's some additional adjustments for preference. So what we're gonna do here today is get you to correct, get you to a target from which we can add a little salt and pepper um, to make you happy. Alright. And that's what we ought to all be doing. It's easy. It is easy, but it takes practice, man. And I'm see, I'm old. I'm old, and I've been doing this for a long time. So what kind of equipment and gear are we going to start with, or do we need that now, or when does that begin? Equipment and gear? You mean like tuning gear? Sure. So, uh, because since you've got a DSP in here, we need a we need a computer so that we can access all those filters and do all that work. We also need, um, we also need a, a CD um, with some tracks that are designed to help us do this, because it's not arbitrary. Um, because we're, the, the, the initial exercise is to get to a target or to get to correct. Um, and then we need a, we need a real-time analyzer or some way for us to view what we're hearing because people are much better at integrating with their eyes than their ears, right? I've been doing this for 30 years and it's much faster for me to use a real-time analyzer so that I can see the frequency response rather than getting in and listening to stuff and going, oh, I think it might be this or I think it might be that. So we're going to use we're going to use analysis tools to speed up the process and to and to make it predictable. And one of the tools we're going to we're going to use is a is a prototype uh, microphone array and multiplexer that we're uh, that, that we're working on because it makes things easier and faster and um, and it's cool. All right, let's get started. So we're going to start by equalizing the left channel. Okay. And then we're going to we're going to equalize it <clears throat> to a target curve. Um, and then we're going to turn off the left channel. We're going to equalize the right channel to a target curve. And then we're going to get in and listen. What is this horrible noise we're hearing? It's called pink noise. Pink noise is a random noise signal that has equal energy over every octave. And we use that as a stimulus signal because it looks kind of like the frequency distribution in music. And we have an analyzer that's set up to read a flat line when all of the energy in, e in each of the octaves is equal. So it's not we, white noise. No, white noise is equal energy at every frequency, and it doesn't really occur in nature, and it sounds really bright, too much high frequency. Is and there it, a black noise? No, there's brown, and all of the all of the different noise colors indicate a different uh, a different set of filters that one would apply to white noise in order to get that other kind of noise. So mm. what we have here is a. We have a computer with a piece of real-time analysis software on it, which will allow us to view the frequency response in the car. And we're using a super cool sort of a uh, prototype of a microphone array. So a microphone array is several microphones along with a box that switches between each of the microphones. And because there's a space between our two ears and because we move our heads, measuring this with a single microphone is a useful measurement but uh, a microphone array correlates a little better with what we with the way we hear um so when possible i like to use this thing because it makes the job quicker and more predictable and ultimately a little uh, a little better and we're working on one of these as a product that will sell so this is a good opportunity for me to to test out um <clears throat> test out test out a hand-built prototype <clears throat>
Jazz frightens people. All right, so a couple of questions. Jazz frightens people. Where's the amp in here? Right behind this seat. Is it an enormous hassle to get to? Enormous hassle, no. But it'll require some time for Jaime to rip it up. Oh, seat, remo seat needs to yeah. be removed. Yeah, which is not so hard in here. No, uh, it's not. Not. It takes them five minutes. Well, we just need to do a basic tune. Okay. There's nothing about this that that should prevent you from being happy at the end of this exercise. Beautiful. Beautiful here. Okay, let me have him rip out the door. You don't even need to do that. All we need to do is just plug in his computer to the VXI amp. Oh, I got it right here. Yeah. So let's do that. Let me let me let me check the basic settings and make all that right, and then we'll stick the mic. One, two, three, and four. Why why do we have this? All right. So let me give you a small recap over the entire situation for the installation of my vehicle. Agora Auto Sounds really did it up. They did an incredible job at redoing my entire installation. Um, these Audio Frog little tweeters, they're probably my favorite part of the entire installation. Check these out. So these are like these one and a half inch dome tweeters that Jaime had to make a pod for me um, to put into my pillar. And then we put in these six and a half down here. So my entire system consists of these tweeters, six and a halfs, and then I got six and a half components and then I have two subs in the back. I'm really impressed by the capabilities of the DSP. The sound system sounds so good. It's so clean and clear. And it's really due to the fact that the right components were chosen. The installation was done quite well. And Andy Waymeyer came in and just killed it. The capabilities of the DSP, a lot of that footage that you see, I understand and I know it's it's pretty boring, right? White noise, peak noise, peak noise really, right? Peak noise is a boring, boring technical exercise that they have to go through. Basically what he did was he had to have this full spectrum noise come out of a speaker. He had an analyzer, this little head unit analyzer that you saw in the video, and it was analyzing to a computer and he could see the deficiencies in a slope curve. That's a very technical thing, but he could see where it's missing some and he could actually pump up a little bit by equalization of choosing a particular Hertz area to either add or subtract to, and really started to smooth out the capabilities of each speaker individually. That's probably one of the most impressive things about the entire situation. So as you see what Andy is going through right there and how he's making his selections and looking at these numbers and dialing in formulas, I mean, the guy's an expert, he's been doing it for, well over who knows how long i'm only guessing well over 20 you know years what have you but the guy is something special for those that you do, for those of you that don't know harman Kardon was the leading manufacturer they might still be for home audio harman Kardon was the shit back in the day when i was younger andy was there when it was the best of the best the the top dog that's where Andy's background came from, Harmony Carden and others that I'm sure I'm not aware of. The guy is something special, and I'm very thankful. Shout out to Andy Waymeyer, shout out to Jaime, everybody at Auto Sounds, Agora Auto Sounds, for really hooking up my car. I'm really inspired. I'm looking forward to doing any other pieces right here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do more reviews like this. I'm going to get into the auto reviewing because automotive stuff is looking pretty rad. So I'm going to review some of the speakers in the future, some of the amplifiers, even the head units. So so there you have it. I got my, my phone plays Bluetooth to my head unit right here and I'm able to listen to my stuff. I'll put so I'm able to control with the knob right here. Then I got my bass knob down here. And there you have it, right? Pretty rad. Love it. Love it, love it, love it for so many ways. My name is Luis Flores. I want to thank you for checking out this video and I'll see you on the next one, right? Peace.